Okay, hello, my name is Tara. I'm in the, doing a PhD in Department of Geography. Just to give a bit of context to Pavlos's visit, uh, we met at the Eating Cities platform back in August. Um, it's a project of an NGO that brings together different food system stakeholders once a year for a week summer program. Um, Pavlos is here today to talk about Capsella. Um, it's a Euro Horizon 2020 funded project and this is one part of a larger project and it's based on increasing transparency in food systems. Um, so I leave Pablo's talk about this. We're going to send around a piece of paper if you want to put your email if you have any questions or if you want to follow up afterwards. Thank you. Thanks, Tara. Um, thanks a lot for your time. Um, I will take some minutes to explain to you what we try to uh, what is Capsella, what is the food scenario of Capsella that we are coordinating and uh, start entering the uh, practical implementation phase and I uh, will welcome your comments and ideas uh, as the dialogue matures with uh, Cork, mainly through the City Food Policy Council. Uh, I would be interested to see what type of stakeholders and ideas we can gather around uh, uh, the application of this project uh, in, in this community. So Capsella is uh, an ICT project that taps into food um, and is aiming to raise collective awareness for sustainability and social innovation. Uh, it aims to leverage collective knowledge powered by crowdsourced solutions, uh, mainly open data systems and open technology systems, open innovation. And uh, our uh, role as pilot leaders is to facilitate a participatory research to collect requirements of communities from the bottom up and uh, at the end we aim to create a prototype pro uh, a product uh, that with, uh, with, uh, will be open data driven. So the project started in January of uh, the current year. It will run for a total of 30 months and um, uh, as you can see it's uh, under the ICT uh, part of Horizon 2020 for the creation of collective awareness collective awareness platforms for sustainability and social innovation. There are three universities from Greece, Italy and uh, uh, England, uh, three s uh, small companies and uh, two NGOs. And I come from We Deliver Taste, which is a food systems innovation uh, company. We combine a background of uh, biodiversity, gastronomy, um, hospitality and marketing and we are very keen in uh, uh, investigating uh, uh, opportunities in social innovation, collaborative consumption, the sharing economy, always with the aim of bringing more transparency and more market awareness in, awareness in food supply chains. So Capsella has three scenarios. Uh, one is the input of the food system. It focuses on seeds, like create open data systems for seed savers to be able to disseminate information about different accessions and vari varieties of, uh, of uh, crop seeds. Uh, it is uh, coordinated by the uh, Italian University in Santana and Rete Semi Rurali, which is the largest network of seed keepers in Italy. Uh, then the medium of the food system is the farm and is uh, creating, uh, the field scenario is creating uh, open data solutions for composting, for uh, um, uh, functional ag promotion of functional agrobiodiversity in, uh, in cropping systems and is led by ZLTO which is an NGO of participatory extension in Holland and Agrono which is uh, an SME based in Greece. And uh, our scenario is the food scenario, which is uh, tr trying to create open data driven solutions to address uh, food chains, to bring more transparency and market awareness, as I said. And it is uh, coordinated by the Athena Research Center, wh which belongs at the University of Athens, and we deliver taste. Um, specifically, because we thought that the public money uh, should also be spent for public utility and public service, we think to uh, apply this pilot on the public food system, the public procurement uh, system, public food service. The reason for that is that uh, there are 10 million public meals served every day across the, Uni the European Union. So this has a potential to have an impact on food supply chains and also influence uh, the environmental footprint, but also so social footprint and health aspects of urban food. 
the truth is that the majority of uh, public food served uh, in uh, public canteens is of relatively low quality and um, with not real considerations about the ecological footprint, although there are some new approaches, you know, to visualize farmers, local products and so on. This is a new wave into this uh, sector. And of course, this is a food system, massive supply chains that are paid by taxpayers' money. And as people are getting more digital in the cities, they start getting a new awareness and the question, okay, since we are paying so much money, we might as well get a better service of that. So Capsella aims to create tools that will enhance connectivity between different peers uh, in the supply chain in order to better inform canteen managers, consumers, maybe parents, as I will be sharing here, an imag imaginative scenario of such an application in public school food. You all are very aware about uh, the type of diseases that uh, are related to, uh, uh, all to our uh, consumption habits. And uh, you pr I'm sure you're also aware about this new understanding that comes in at the city level, but also at the central government level about the costs of non-communicable diseases. So the vision here is uh, to use the power of crowdsourced technologies and ICT in order to empower um, kitchens, canteen managers, but above all consumers to be able to have more informed choices about what they put in their uh, bodies and what is the impact of this. So what Capsella will do is we'll do aggregation of different data sets and analysis of these data sets, but I think the most important aspect of Capsella is we'll do the knowledge extraction. There are a lot of data in scientific papers, in open databases, in closed databases that are not really accessible to the citizen out there or they are not written in a format that is actually usable knowledge for the consumer or the professional. So we aim to extract this knowledge from different sources of data, open databases, in order to support this decision making. And the beneficiaries could be procurement officers, canteen managers, consumers. This largely depends on context. So we wish to create a web application which uh, will have two main demonstrators. We call the one B2C, like business to customer, like uh, something that will be uh, giving information to the final consumer who enjoys a public meal in a canteen. But also there could also be a B2B, business to business component, something that will be a tool for public procurement officers who could possibly get due diligence data from their suppliers and maybe create feedback loops with the consumers of this food. The bullets are not decided yet, but there are several aspects that are technically feasible uh, that we could visualize in this uh, uh, platform, the Capsella platform. We could, for example, ext uh, extract data from all the recipes and ingredients about the nutritional value of meals, uh, about the presence of allergens, about the origin of ingredients, uh, about the environmental footprint, food miles, and so on. Uh, to do that, we have available a number of bibli bibliographic databases which are available openly in the web, mainly coming from the WHO and the USDA and uh, statistics agencies like Eurostat or the Eurobarometer. So there is a wealth of knowledge and data out there that could be aggregated to create these utilities. The other level, and this is where comes the role of a local community, let's say, or a local um, uh, canteen, is that in order to be able to localize these open databases in the context of a given kitchen, we need to have access to the recipes, what type of ingredients they uh, um, use, because each recipe and each ingredient has a lot of data in terms of nutritional value, but also in terms of cultural value, in terms of environmental uh, uh, properties and so on. And the third level will be the data that will be inputted by the final consumer. Like to be able to have a personalized service, we will need probably to know what is the gender or the age or the body weight or the height or the allergies of a specific person. And in this way, all this data, like taking the recipes, finding the type of uh, uh, utility we want to serve and also combining with this personal data we will be able to offer a number of recommendations 
and personalize uh, the system. To, and of course, you can also put other type of data. You could involve farmers into this, uh, or suppliers, uh, or whatever other professional in the supply chain into the system, and uh, they will be able to log in with their own profile and be able to harness different parts of the database. So if we still keep on our <laughs> imaginative scenario about school food, what we want to create is the Capsella platform. And then there will be like some data that will stay with the application that is staying with the individual user. What Capsella is obliged to do in the context of this Horizon 2020 is to create the backend, like all the technologies and methodologies for data aggregation in the backend. But we have decided that we would like to also provide a front end, like a web uh, application to this community of practice. As I said, we have different data sources that are openly available to us. Then we could imagine that the canteen manager could have enhanced in interaction, for example, monitoring the consumption of meals or entering the recipes or updating the recipes when they change. Possibly there could be some sort of interaction with the suppliers. Then the chef could also be involved. He could be some, um, maybe sharing tips or sharing experiences. It could be a minor interaction, but uh, it could, for example, press a button to confirm that he has served this meal, so the system is informed. Another level is, for example, we could involve pa parents who will be able to register with the, for their children, and they will be able to monitor what type of food is served to their kids in the school canteen, which part of the daily allowances are met of certain nutrients. Um, and uh, as you saw, we have mentioned the uh, traffic light system, uh, which we are also believe, believe, we believe that is a, a useful system for this type of dissemination. We could even imagine of having kids, like now kids also have access to mobile phones or, uh, or the web, or in collaboration with their parents, they can like at least check in physical space at home, like about the consumption of certain foods at school and actually make public food a, a topic of discussion at home. So the next steps that we need for the application is uh, we need to find the appropriate context. And ideally, this should be a public kitchen um, that has the potential to contribute data, mainly recipes, to identify what type of data what types of data exist and which one of them is open because it's not necessary that we work on allergens or on nutrients. We will work on whatever data is openly available. We need to identify who is the technical, the technician that sits in front of those databases who will have to coordinate with the technicians in the University of Athens that will be doing the coding. And um, we aim to do this participatory research hopefully in the city of Cork uh, for the next six months. Then the pilot, all the coding, the backend will be developed on the next half, or the second half of 2017. And um, in the first half of 2018, we will have the pilot trials, the testing phase, but also the final product development, which also includes dissemination. Now, we have access to methodologies for user engagement, but uh, in order to be able to apply those, we need to define the users, the user groups and the different personas according to context because working with the canteen in a hospital is different than working with the canteen in a university, different than working with the canteen in a school. The hospital, for example, have diversified menus according to the type of diseases that pa patients have. Um, so this dissemination, we already have the research of the type of engagement paths that we need to follow, uh, but you know, the definition of personas will come later on the project according to the context. And um, our idea is, at this stage, is to interact with the community, to understand intentions, to see if there is resonance with this message of open data and uh, hyper-connectivity, which we believe is not only the future, is the present, but actually is also the past. If you see the medicine sector, if you see the airline sector, the, when you book a ticket and you just show up in the gate with a printout. This is based on open data, which took a lot of time of research. So this is what we try to facilitate at this point. And 
our position is kind of awkward because we don't really have a prototype and this is uh, what is motivating and inspiring and this is probably why it's innovative, <laughs> it's not here yet. But um, our idea is to open this process to the community and um, get feedback, try to understand what data can be shared and build uh, a scenario around this data. Oh yeah, we did a questionnaire survey with different experts from across Europe. The sample was, I think, 32 persons. Uh, they were like representatives of NGOs, researchers, procurement officers, uh, canteen managers. It looks like the major challenges for identifying and sharing information required to, part to the participants. The major difficulty is to get information about food waste management about the environmental footprint and ingredients, which makes um, a sense because a lot of this data is with uh, logistics and logistics are known not to share data openly. People have access to dietary requirements and nutritional values. People have access to allergens. Um, relatively high uh, responses on traceability and if you see what are the current barriers to accessing information, the highest barrier is lack of connectivity between sectors. And this is exactly what Capsella tries to disrupt, to actually connect the sensors, the, the sectors. Then it's an issue of lack of data quality. That's why it's important that we work localized, pilot in a specific kitchen and really work with them and in order to get high quality uh, data. And the fact that the data is not retrievable. To give you an example, for example, meteorological data exists all over. It exists with Yahoo, it exists with the Army, it exists with the Met Office, it exists with universities, but these are like separate data sets that are very rarely useful to uh, uh, the citizen. And then a few years back, some companies like weather.com came and put this data together and now you have a tool. So in an imaginative scenario, in one and a half year from now, we will have a web application to disseminate this type of information for public food in a specific context. And the hope is that in the next five years, those type of solutions will become more mainstream. And cities will also start uh, tapping into it because there are all sorts of uh, opportunities you can build around these systems. For example, if I'm able to know what I have already consumed in this canteen and I have a recommendation for the rest of my daily allowance, which can be a local recipe or it can be connectivity with like local e-shops of local food enterprises that are creating healthy food, these are all or um, connection with like uh, eye health, the application of iPhone about health or like wearables. This is like a new way of how Internet of Things can also enter like uh, informed decision making uh, into the um, into supply chain management, importantly consumers role in the supply chain. And we think that the ICT can have a role. Uh, we keep hearing that. And um, for us, the challenge is like to just find a, f a pilot to work on that. And I think that would be all. I hope I didn't get too much of your time. And of course, I'm available for questions, and uh, if you share your uh, email with us, uh, we are welcome your feedback. And uh, if you are interested, we and we do something in Cork, you are mostly invited to follow the process, especially when we are talking about nutrition. It would be good to have the nutritionists on board uh, in some sort of level of involvement. Um, I have a question regarding the, the first of all, I think it's fantastic. It's a very clever addition, but I think when you explained it there in terms of methodological data at one stage, that data was just uh, scrap data. And when it's pulled together, when it's aggregated, then you see the true uh, value of it. And it's a good example of the food, that all these bits of information, if they can be pulled together. And you say um, the, the long-term goal would be open data. And would that be a uh, cap seller database? Would that be, uh, would just, like, a department like this, would we have access? Would anyone have access to that data? Yeah, cap seller is entirely based on open software. So in a sense that there'll be like an API and application protocol uh, uh, um, program interface, so we can query that data. Yes, and actually part of Capsella is to incubate new projects, n maybe new startups out of it. So our deliverable is to create a backend of a different APIs on uh, of these databases. But we thought that it would be nice to also create a prototype because it doesn't cost so much to create the front end 
and it because we like to enter in this sector it will help us to have a prototype to show around and possibly de further develop so this will be entirely open and entirely be entire entirely uh, retrievable and uh, interoperable Excellent. yeah so it's all open data it's, it's, it's not closed data and uh, the type of the platform will be hosted by a public server in the university of athens there has to be some sort of hosting that is uh, robust enough and uh, secure enough and uh, colleagues and coordinators of the project in uh, in Athens can so can ensure that. Mm. Oh, sorry. Has your pilot for Cork City identified schools? Uh, it's actually my. I'm only 48 hours in the city. We have had <laughs> some. <laughs> the idea is that, like you know, we don't come from the top and say, okay, this is what we think. The idea is like to open up a process and a methodological framework to understand what are the real requirements. There are some surveys taking place Europe-wide, but obviously as we get deeper into practical implementation, we need to funnel down and focus. Uh, there are certain challenges uh, working with different uh, you know, canteen systems. I'm hearing that in Cork, for example, there are not many hot meals served in schools, but this doesn't change the philosophy of the project because even packaged food that is served has an ingredient list and this is actually what we can work with and actually the technologies are quite astonishing there are ways that you know a, a, a consumer can s take a, a snap a photo of the logo of a product or the ingredient list and this can be translated in all sorts of uh, uh, retrievable data you can also perform sentiment analysis like uh, social media analysis to understand how people feel about uh, this food uh, served but this would probably be more uh, be applicable more to commercial operations um, but uh, from the technological point of view uh, it is um, these are feasible yeah i think we have dish schools here that um, are where food is, is, is supplied for disadvantaged schools so mm -hmm. that might be an option of and course crashes as well which is for us, the main driver of choosing the piloting site would be the access to data, basically the recipes. If it's uh, open, if it's high quality, like it's real, <laughs> um, then it's something that uh, we can develop in the next uh, 12 months. But the idea is actually, you know, we can imagine like some sort of multi-stakeholder consultation coming, taking place around March, where we invite different stakeholders to really decide and um, actually it's a project that we are not going to just deliver and leave it there. It's something that we are interested to further study and uh, scale in different cities because we believe it can have impact. And uh, as I said, there are certain layers that can be explored on a local basis, like for example, involving uh, the small entrepreneurial ecosystem of cities. Um, enhancing connectivity between producers and consumers outside the public canteen just by visualizing them and um, in our research Cork has emerged as one of the three four possible cities in Europe to be frank one is uh, Copenhagen of course they have been doing amazing work in public procurement over the last decade they now are very proud advertising that 90 percent of their public meals are organic which is let's say <laughs> It is um, remarkable. <laughs> then another city is the city of Stirling in Scotland, who wishes to identify itself as the food capital. And uh, the third one, through the contact I had established with Tara in the summer, is the is Cork. But of course, we we, we keep hearing about Cork, like there was this Cork declaration, Cork 2.0, a couple of months ago, coming out specifically addressing innovation issues around food, and you know. The word innovation is pretty much what we need to open a small window in this cathedral of unsustainable food. <laughs> yeah. Do you think, is it possible to open data to trace food back to the source, to the farm that it came from? Um, we think it's extremely difficult because there are a number of non-food actors that are involved, from packagers all the way to wholesale markets, transport companies and as I said it, it, you know we need to establish direct interaction with the data manager that would be ideal basically but I don't think that we are at this point right now 
we might be in five or ten years, where, you know, imagine a small article on a procurement contract that <laughs> asks for canteens to actually disclose, openly share this type of data. Then it's a matter of uh, a few days of coding work to integrate these layers. Uh, we can only work with whatever data exists. But I can also imagine working with a canteen, like you know, like the university here is advertising a connection with a local farm, and I believe this is like about 10, 15 vegetables. We can imagine involving those farmers, as I show in the diagram, to share data about the type of vegetable, seasonal availability, which, ki which type of um, crops they share with the can they sell to the canteen and so on. So for specific products, as long as we are granted access to the data holders, I think we can trace <coughs> them. You mentioned just some of the more difficult parts in getting access to data, like one is mentioned logistics companies. They usually like to be very tight on their data. And then, um, well, I mean, Asian studies, and in, in, in China, there is one app. Like it, it does not really have something to do with food, but it's in pollution management. Mm -hmm. And the government requires big companies to disclose all the data, like on air pollution and water pollution, and so this led basically to a, like theoretically, to a, a China-wide um, database of of pollution data. There are still lots of problems because companies use all kinds of tricks, I guess, in the food industry, and also probably be similar. But what would, according to your opinion? Um, um, what else could we do like, to make data better available? Do you think this is something the legislature should push for? Or is this something maybe once we achieve a certain, uh, maybe once enough people are aware of this, we could, this is something which mm. maybe which is more, consu consumer, more consumer driven? Like, do you think it's consumer user driven or this, do you think this is something the legislature? There are definitely ways to have it entirely consumer-driven solutions. We are in the era of citizen science, uh, like citizens can have ways to co-design this type of um, um, data collection together with uh, experts. Uh, this is not the context of Capsella, uh, but I, I personally believe that, you know, when laws are modernized to, modern need, to current needs, then they can unlock whole new areas of potential and uh, on the 18th of April, there is a new legislation passed by the European Union that mandates that the tenders are not only offered to those that bid the lower price, they should also have environmental and nutritional standards, which is a breakthrough and really they diversifies who actually bids for that. Because right now, or until now, there were only a couple of companies that had the, you know, the volume to bid lower contracts. Now, one thing is that the EU legislation asks it, but as of now, I'm not aware of any tools, any assessment tools for companies or suppliers or procurement officers to assess the environmental performance, at least a mainstream tool. There might be local systems, local audit systems. But, I mean, in some ways, and your, the two questions that were raised there, I mean, around the strike the very heart of the whole public procurement process and, and, and also the skills needed to participate in that process. Um, and, and ordinarily, that's been driven by an obligation to take the lowest tender price that's been supplied by a contractor or a would-be contractor. Um, now, uh, there have been some really notable examples uh, of where there's been increased specification uh, alongside price. And our friend from Ayrshire, uh, who was also at your eating oh, cities, Robin, Robin Gurley. Oh, yeah. I mean, he led, for example, in East Ayrshire, um, a remarkable process of opening up uh, the tendering of food to schools, which was, uh, ever since Margaret Thatcher, had only been ever driven by the lowest possible tender price. Mm. And he began to identify local producers and help to aggregate them together so they could supply in sufficient volume. And then you begin to specify, you know, locality as being a, a requirement which addresses your, your concerns about origin and traceability and so on. You can begin to start to do that. Uh, but of course, most contractors supplying large volumes of undifferentiated material, nobody knows where it's from. I mean, that's the whole purpose. It's bugs as far as they're concerned. So they're coming from washed and processed and chopped in vacuum-ready bags and so on. So. Um, 
And although there's been some, some effort made by local authorities, both in the UK but elsewhere, in Europe and Italy and so on, here we've tended to be not have the skills or you know, we've not shared the knowledge to actually take it further. And I think if there is a, another round of opening up by the Commission to say, look, there are re further requirements for, for reporting beyond this issue of price, I think we, we need to put pressure upon our uh, procurement officers particularly in the public sector, to, to be looking at those specifications and to, to find ways that we can increase, because that will open up possibilities then for new suppliers to participate in that market, uh, which should stand to the benefit of all of us, actually, because that will hopefully make things a bit more localised to some degree and you know perhaps bring in others like organic suppliers and so on and so forth. So, it's, it's Let, thank you. Let me emphasize that um, this is a research project. It's a research action. So um, it is not really, uh, there is not really a, a high intention to, we are not obliged to come up with a market product. And that means that uh, we, we are not pressed financially and like, Imagine if I come from an SME and I had to invest 50% of my participation in this project, then I would might as well come up with a product that we would like to capitalize. But it's 100% research, 100% funded research. And um, what we try to bring is a new framework for increased interaction and collaborative decision making in cities. And uh, at least the Western world and uh, you know the European Union and European cities have made commitments in terms of the Mil Milan Food Policy Pact, the Habitat 3, COP21 last year, the Sustainable Development Goals, Goal 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities, and the vehicle of food and public food can be a very powerful vector for change. And I believe from what we, from our interaction, there is high um, uh, intention for this type of change. There are people that are, ve most of people are very sensitized about environmental aspects of food, especially when this food costs a lot and when this food is paid by taxpayer money. But somehow it's difficult, it's, it's, it's strange that we don't have a way to actually assess and close these knowledge gaps um, in terms of environmental data, for example. To tell you the truth, when we send this proposal to communities, we need to be very focused, we need to be also very wide. <laughs> and uh, we chose the issue of, uh, to, of school food to demonstrate that because school food is also kind of emotive and it might uh, you know, trigger different responses, because one thing is talking to the academic community, other thing is talking to the, the catering company or the canteen, the, the, the lady that like issues the, the, in the till of the canteen. It, it boils down to that. You know. uh, it's different uh, to, to speak to the commission at the highest level, the European Commission, and uh, we just need to find entry points. And uh, for us, the simplest way is like to just ask something very simple that doesn't require too much effort. Something like, would you like to share your recipes with us? Just this. And then uh, keep stakeholders in the loop and ensure that the whole decision making and process is developing transparently. Yeah. I just, I don't think, 
I think you'll find it very difficult to get catering companies to share their recipes with you. Like we had great difficulty and we had signed confidentiality agreements with them um, and they share them on the basis that we don't show to anyone else. And even some of them have the same catering company but they're different sites. So in that, I, I think you might have a bit of difficulty accessing mm. their recipes because they're very sensitive about who you share them with. I suppose if it was public school food in particular, yeah. Yeah, so there's about three lunch companies it looks like. So there's about 105 schools in Cork receiving funding up to 1.1 million to provide lunch, breakfast, lunch and snacks. One school lunch company have all their data up online, okay. their ingredients. So it might be a bit easier to do it through public food than private business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then other schools go directly to Centra and get their sandwiches and do a deal there. So it might be a bit easier, or maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it would just be depending on who you approach. Yeah. I'd say there's a lot that you could learn from, I was telling you about the food mm -hmm. choice at work. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say there's a lot you could learn from the attractions you've had. This is, you know, the, as I said, the role is not like to come here and say, oh, we have this idea, let's do it. It's like to really investigate what are, what we can work with. Now, to come back to your question, I don't think this is relevant to retail. We have to work, yes, with the people, with the companies that serve, uh, or at least the entities that control the contracts related to serving food. Um, there are certain limitations about the private companies, of course, sharing data, and uh, I can... <laughs> I think we must be extremely lucky that we actually enter in a context of negotiating and getting out of it with uh, some sort of data. But uh, I'm wondering whether there is a, a context, wh whatever small or big or large, that this could be applied. And for example, you know, eating in your canteen here in the university, for example, that uh, enjoys waving a green flag of sustainability. Um, this is already for us, let's say, a small light coming in because these are the type of vehicles and narratives that we, we have an inevitably to base. And obviously, you know, what I suggest here is very, very focused compared to what we have proposed the Commission one and a half year ago. And I think we will probably end up doing something even more focused according to the needs. So this is really, really very, very first time that we expose this idea to, you know, the collective intelligence and you know we try to understand the limitations at the same time we feel it would be extremely shame if we come here with a funded project able to offer a solution for free and this is not actually going forward and uh, we prove that we were wrong to believe that we might as well use public money to pay public utility <laughs> because obviously it would be easier for me for us to maybe work with a fast food delivery company in Greece where they would like to have increased interaction with their clients and all this. <laughs> but we happen, we're still convinced that uh, it's worth pulling, you know, this, this, uh, the, the, the train towards this direction. Yeah. And it's hope worth mentioning as well, which you suggested there, the department has adopted a, an open uh, data policy for a long time now. And the Centre for Health and Diet Research is the exact same within the department. So there are some fabulous data sets. Of course, one is... And so maybe a time that you, you dialogue might open up and you might have to incorporate that into your concept. Absolutely, like these open bibliographic databases are very wide. It's like thousands of ingredients and all this. The more localized context we have, the more useful service we provide to the communities. To the community. And it, for us, what we want to come out of this project is with a methodology on how to do it. And this is the bulk of the effort. Then to be able to apply it in another city, we think it will be easier because of the understanding that we will be gathering, but also the type of uh, modules and methodologies that will be ready to be uh, applied and enhanced. But of course, for cities and contexts that wish to enter early, like with any innovation, they are also able to capitalize on the benefits earlier. And this is not only being a, in the front line of innovation, but also there might be all sorts of other opportunities that can be built locally here in Cork to scale. To work from one school to 10 schools and then to 100 schools, or to work from one hospital to all the hospitals of Ireland or Europe, you know. And uh, exactly, the Co European Commission is exactly what it asks. Uh, like these Horizon 2020 calls, I come from a food movement background 
and uh, coming from Greece, uh, you can imagine that we are a little bit skeptical about how Europe works right now. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like to actually read these calls and be able to bid for one of them and go through the competitive process is actually, there are a lot of good decisions that are being taken. Now, it takes time when these decisions are being, are, they steep down all the way to the lady managing the till <laughs> in the canteen. And this is a big challenge here, how we can accelerate this and how we can actually do this. Just uh, from the point of view of open data, you know, the Department of Education is uh, through the Open Government Partnership. So, uh, Minister Brendan Howland has signed Ireland to the Open Government Partnership. That means that all official departments should make their data open. So there can be a request, especially in relation to the deaf school schools, you know, because it's public money going to feed uh, students. So that, and part of the remission of those public schools is that it should be <coughs> of good nutritional value, so they shouldn't be giving them bags of crisps and cans of coke. So as part of that, there should be, there could be a way to actually request that that data, that that data is made available in the tender, maybe at an aggregate level, mm. but then that, that it can be made available to researchers. So I think that is a valuable avenue to explore. <coughs> now at the unit record, you wouldn't be allowed. And then the second thing that I think would be interesting on an international level would be the feed funding. So there's European Social Fund feeding of funding for five years, worth about 500 million across Europe. Uh, to the most deprived, and each country has to buy food, and it would be interesting to compare mm -hmm. what sort of food that they are buying. And again, there's very clear guidelines on what they, what food should be bought, and then from that point of view, each country has to report back. So they would be interested in somebody doing that research for them, rather than having to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's an opportunity too, and it's just coming in in Ireland now. You know, so. Thank you. Okay, so I'll uh, leave it there and just yeah. want to thank you for Of course, thanks a lot.